Rachel Lachlan, Director with Risk and Resilience with Talus Cyber. Thanks for joining us on Australia and Space TV and welcome to Indo Pacific 2025. Thank you very much, Chris, and glad to be here. Wonderful. Uh, Mitchell, supply chain uh, and the complexities around supply chain, I suppose your title gives it away in terms of risk and resilience, uh, both managing risk but maintaining resilience. How do you approach your job? What does your job currently involve? And then we'll talk about supply chain. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, the job is quite complex in understanding, first and foremost, the risks that our critical infrastructure entities face. Um, we do take an all hazards approach to understand what those risks are, but then understanding what the material risks are to an entity. Um, supply chains at the moment are ever evolving. We've got an ever, ever evolving threat landscape with geopolitical tensions, um, organisations still coming out the back of COVID and the impacts that were felt there, particularly around um, blockages in the Suez Canal um, and the difficulties we had in actually moving goods around the globe. Uh, now we're starting to see further third party intrusions and uh, greater risks start to impact on organisations. Uh, what we do is help entities understand what that means to them and their, um, their assets and their broader strategic opera um, operating objectives and put in place appropriate measures to, to mitigate those or equally avoid those to the extent they possibly can. Um, this is something that's certainly evolving across the industry at yeah. the moment and so yeah it's it's very much a moving feast but uh, certainly something quite fun to work with people on. The other thing is it's never ending for you is it really? No. Uh, every day uh, sort of is, it's going to be a changing thing and I imagine you work to a program of, of risk management as well. Do you limit yourself? You take an all hazards approach, but you are, you know, here with critical infrastructure team, physical security team as well, and on the cyber yep. side. Uh, yeah, how do you approach? Where do you draw the line in terms of the risk and corporate risk? Yeah, so we try and align everything back to the strategic objectives of that organisation first and foremost. It's understanding what they're trying to achieve um, and how that uh, asset contributes to the broader fabric of society as well. Uh, that enables us to focus on what really matters most. Uh, it is, as you said, never really ending. Um, and it, because of that, we do take that strategic approach to try and ring fence it to the extent that we possibly can. Uh, from a supply perspective, there's a methodology that we apply that has come through the Critical Infrastructure Act um, that we've really tailored to be fit for purpose for our clients and the people that we work with to understand who their critical suppliers are, um, why they're important, and then the impacts on the organisation. Uh, there's a lot of value that can be derived from that as well. Uh, and from an entity perspective across Australia, it's a maturing, ever maturing um, op opportunity there. And where are you seeing sort of the, the fast emerging areas, subsea cables uh, and subsea, uh, the reliance on subsea uh, infrastructure, definitely here at Indo-Pacific we're seeing, uh, but also the protection environments and the controls that are coming into place. Uh, yeah, how, how do you see that? Yeah, most definitely. Subsea cables are quite interesting. I think there's probably not the degree of understanding around yeah. Australia's dependency on them. Uh, all of our telecommunications, our data, our internet, Yes, we've got satellites in the sky and in, in space, but a lot of it actually goes through um, under or subsea infrastructure. Uh, should that be breached, and it certainly does occur, particularly throughout uh, European nations and the like, um, that could have quite detrimental impacts on, on organisations here in Australia. So we work with organisations to help them understand where their data is going, how it's being transmitted, what it means if they don't have access to it, um, and how we get, get through everything there as well. So, yeah. Resilience, uh, some of the trends or changes in uh, sort of the applications of resilience. Yep. Uh, is it in the same terms of business continuity? Uh, that's uh, the thinking, but yeah, how's, how's resilience changed in the way that we approach it now? Yeah, so taking the resilience approach, and you're right in saying it's a really an evolution of business continuity. It's taking that uh, BC, typical BCP approach that often looked at um, business resumption in silos and applying it to an enterprise lens yeah. uh, so that we can start to look at the organisation as a whole and understand the dependencies and interdependencies so that we can both respond faster and also get back to operation faster as well. It also then provides a strategic opportunity for organisations should they have their uh, res recovery plans in place at an appropriate level to actually use it to get ahead of their peers that perhaps might be struggling. Yeah. Um, we've seen multiple, multiple examples of uh, incidents that have really gone on for a lot longer than they possibly should have yeah. because organisations haven't or they haven't had that resilience sort of framework in place uh, whereas others um, without naming names have and been able to cauterise the, uh, cauterise the wound a lot quicker so it's helping organisations understand what their core functions are and how they get them back up and running really quick. And you work with your partners and, and clients as well I imagine so you have that insight I think yep. uh, out of the team, you're probably the one with the most insight because you get a sense of where pain points are yep. and 
and trigger points as well. And right? particularly those common failings the as well. Jeff. Yes, yes, those interdependencies are often really missed. Um, what happened? We restart a system in one area of the business. We don't actually understand what data impacts it could have in another. So yeah. having that understanding and being able to move around and articulate that across business lines is really valuable. Wonderful. Well, Mitchell, Director with Risk and Resilience with Talus Cyber and here at the Indo-Pacific. Enjoy the rest of the show. Fascinating and lovely to meet you today. Uh, and thanks for joining us on Australian Space TV. No worries. Thanks, Chris. Enjoy the rest of your day.